Hey there, Shirtlight here. Have you ever wanted to achieve breakneck speeds, impressive altitudes and decent maneuverability with nothing but a grunt suit? Well, thanks to the power of Xeon Engineering, you can do so even as early as the year 0079 of the Universal Century. In this entry, I'll be covering the MS-07H8 Goof Flight Type, which has first appeared in the OAF MS Team anime and how it works in the game Gundam Assault Survive for the PSP. I'm gonna need to bring up a whiteboard for this as well as explain some shorthands since I have yet to make a proper video on the combat and mechanics of that game. Yes, the whiteboard is basically just MS Paint, I'm glad you asked. So there's a couple of things I have to get out of the way first so that you don't get lost in soup of various terms. So just like in the other art thing Gundam games or Gundam Metal games, whichever you prefer, there's a consumable resource known as the SP gauge. You can spend 5 bars to activate a powerful special attack, 10 bars to become briefly invulnerable and 1 bar to perform charged versions of shots, melee attacks and boosting. It replenishes over time and it refills even faster by killing enemies. Charge boosts propel you forwards without consuming any boost. You can also follow up with a melee attack which gives you a unique combo. As for the charge melee, you essentially perform a special melee attack which throws the enemy into the air, which you can then follow up with further attacks. When it comes to charge shots, those vary from weapon to weapon, but generally you get extra damage and the shots don't consume ammo. Speaking of ammo, if you use a charge shot while reloading, it takes one more SP gauge bar. Another thing that I should bring up is that you can fast fall by inputting backwards dash while blocking. Now, you should have a decent grasp of the mechanics I'm going to reference, so onwards to the flight school segment. Your moveset is composed of three things, a 75mm Gatling shield, a heat sword and a toggle that allows you to switch between the walking mode and hovering. The walking mode is relatively mundane, no different from the movement of most other mobile suits. Now what should interest you is the hover mode. The hover mode is turned on and off using the input for your secondary weapon. On the ground, your movement becomes a little slower, becomes very similar to the ground movements of the MS-09 DOM. But unlike the DOM, you can't move backwards while actively firing which, while occasionally annoying, is pretty accurate to the lore. Dodging backwards does do the trick if you need to do so in this oddly specific scenario. On the note of dodging, you do carry far more inertia which makes you slide along the ground as if it was ice. Well, slower, but you get what I mean. This also applies to things such as the pushback after blocking a hit, as well as any other propelling forces which kinda gives you an incentive to use your walking mode as well in certain cases. Now here's the interesting part. Using your thrusters in hover mode. Here's what happens when you press the cross button while hovering. First of all, you will generate thrust, propelling you forward, with some of the inertia being somewhat retained when you let go of the button. And you should do so on occasions, since in these games the thruster gauge replenishes when not in use. Managing this gauge also influences the time you can spend speeding along the ground or quote unquote flying in the air. Going back to the forward thrust state, which is what I'll use to refer to every single instance of the cross button being held down, your movement inputs now control different things. Your left and right directions on the d-pad control your rotation or yaw, which is a bit harder to adjust in this state and the forwards and backwards direction buttons change your pitch, which is the angle controlling your vertical positioning in a way that's similar to contemporary jets and planes. The pitch will be automatically reset when not holding the direction key, so you don't have to worry about that one too much. Unlike the mobile armors, the forwards input increases your elevation, and the backwards input does the contrary. This is good when you want to take off or control your altitude. However, it does also carry some limitations. For example, while you're flying upwards, you're also facing upwards, which gives you a worse firing angle and needlessly weights ammunition of the Gatling. 
The main reason being the fact that the machine guns in this game fire faster than they adjust their aim. It's much better when you're facing downwards, but you will lose altitude quite fast. So at the end of the day, finding the angle that works for you is recommended. Anyways, this isn't the combat tutorial for the game, and I will probably make one at some point, but yeah, this is mainly how to fly with this particular machine. So let's stay on the note of the forward thrust mode for a second before we go on to the second part. Dashing still works, but it cuts the inertia from any previous maneuvers and makes you fall diagonally downwards. Now the second most frequent part of your aerial movement are basically all the moments outside of the forward thrust mode, when the cross button isn't pressed, or if you've pressed the triangle. You retain some of the inertia and you will start to steadily lose altitude after a brief moment. However, you also get some of your thruster gauge back, allowing you to go back to flying again. You can also turn around with ease, not to mention the improved firing angles. Another useful thing that you can do is fast falls, in case you want to touch down real quick. Just keep in mind that if you block for too long, you will slow down too much and the inertia gained from flying around will be completely lost. Speaking of touching down, you can sometimes skip the landing recovery by inputting the forward thrust. It does require some training as well as good thruster gauge management, because you do need a little bit of it for both fast falls and speeding along the ground. And before you ask, switching back to the walking mode isn't good for fast landing. It does have its own uses though. Now that you have a proper grasp of the basics, let's move on to using the SP gauge. First of all, the charge shot. Shield Gatling's charge shot is a barrage of shots which excels against multiple targets. At the same time it is very situational. Charge melee is almost useless, in most cases, since the only follow-up hit can be the Gatling. As for the charge boost, it's really good because regardless of any other factor, it just rapidly moves you forward or towards whatever you are locked onto while regenerating your thruster gauge. This can be used for two main purposes, offense and mobility. When it comes to the latter, you obviously get to travel through the air without having to worry about thrust gauge management. But you can also follow up with a fast fall which gives you a rather unique falling trajectory. The offensive use of the charge boost is quite simple to grasp as well, given that you get to dash straight into the target you are locked onto and melee combo will do some decent damage. This is also the purpose of your special attack, momentarily defying all laws of physics in order to throw yourself into the enemy with a set of devastating melee attacks. There's another thing that I think should be mentioned, which are the regular melee attacks. They may be rather generic, but sometimes you will have to resort to doing so should the opponent's armor prove too high for your shield gatling. There's only three types, so don't worry, I'll be brief. The first one is the neutral combo, which you get when you input melee on the ground without dashing. It does the most damage, but may keep you open if you miss the first hit. It's a good follow-up tool though. Second one is a downward swing which comes out whenever you melee either in the air or while dodging sideways and backwards. Decent combo starter, but it's best used on the ground. And lastly, you can launch with your heat sword by dashing forwards and tapping melee, which is largely situational in terms of utility. Well, that should be it for the flight tutorial. If you want to upgrade the flight type, I'd recommend investing some tuning points into the thruster capacity, Reload speed, rotation speed, thrust power, maybe mobility, or just get it some decent armor, because its stats are pretty low, even for a D-ring mobile suit. Impressive speed, fragile armor. You can get the GUF flight type by unlocking the regular GUF and buying a booster, which means you'll have to complete the second mission in the 0079 campaign as on the Xeon side, buy the goof, then buy the booster, which is by the way available from the very start, and then you'll just have to do the whole research plan for the goof flight type. It's not that hard to get your hands on one, and you'll probably have a lot of fun with it. Anyways, I suppose that's it, so as always there's more stuff in the works. 
If you happen to enjoy my content, there's the various buttons down below the video as well as the comment section. Thank you very much for your support and checking out my stuff in general. So have a good one and this is Shirtlaid signing out.